Hi everyone, my name's Corey and I am the owner of the Cat's Meow Wreath Boutique. Today we're going to learn how to make a tree topper bow. First, we're going to use the large Pro Bow the Hand to make this large tree topper bow. You're going to need 26 gauge floral wire. You will also need two and a half inch wired ribbon. You can use as many rolls as you'd like. Um, I chose to use three. Um, this is Sam's Club ribbon, so it makes this bow extremely affordable. You really don't use a lot of ribbon, surprisingly, for as large as this bow is. You are also going to need a pair of scissors, a pair of wire cutters, and I use two pipe cleaners that I twist together to make a longer one. That's just for the finished product. What you're gonna wanna do first is you're gonna wanna cut two wires approximately 28 inches long each. Unfortunately, I'm having a hard time finding the individual floral stem wires, so I'm gonna have to use this round rolled up wire that I found at Dollar Tree but it works, so that's what we're gonna go with. You're gonna wanna make sure you keep them separate because you'll be using them in two different ways. You can actually make this bow any size you want. This is just using row F and it makes for approximately a 16 inch in diameter bow by between 8 and 10 inches tall. So it's definitely a significant bow. So first what you're going to do is you're going to separate your wires and then, I'm sorry you can't really see what I'm doing here, you're going to want to trim the ends of all your ribbons just to make sure they're even and everybody's starting on the same area. This one, my ribbon was a little bit bent because I used a rubber band. This is last year's Christmas ribbon, so I wanted to make sure that I had a nice smooth surface to work with. Again, I apologize that I'm out of focus here. This is my first video. But what you're gonna wanna do is take all three ribbons and you're gonna to wanna to match them up as best you can all together. It doesn't matter with this type of bow what ribbon is first um, because you're gonna be fluffing and pulling them apart and moving them around as you want at the end. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to, again, make sure everything's lined up, but you're gonna to wanna to pinch this really nice. You don't want it to be too messy because you won't get a really good bow. So you want to have a little extra give in your ribbon and leave about an inch at the base of the tail there. And you want to fold your ribbon in half. At least this is what I do. And again, sorry I'm out of view here. But you're going to want to wrap that wire around about two times, nice and tight, over each other. You don't want them to be, you know, not on top of each other there. You're gonna wanna make it nice and tight. The beginning steps are pretty important because it sets the tone for how your bow is gonna turn out. See, so I'm just showing you there. I had a little boo-boo, so I had to start over. But what you're gonna want to do, and I was having trouble with my ribbon coming over at the same time, so sorry about that. You're gonna wanna start with your middle, I hate to say this, middle finger up at the top there. And I always like to make sure my ribbons are smooth and even. So you're going to put the end of your ribbon there in the center of the base finger. I like to hold it with my thumb and then twist clockwise, very important to twist clockwise, nice and tight. 
I know it seems like there's a lot of extra wire, but at the end, you'll see why. Then you'll go ahead and secure it. The top of the base finger has a little slice in it that you can hook that in. And then you're gonna take the bottom of the wire and wrap it, you just need to wrap it around once, the little screw, I'm sorry, the little nail that's at the bottom there. And then you can just tuck that wire underneath the bow maker. So I just try to form the end of my ribbon there around the base finger. And then what you're gonna want to do, I was moving my ribbon holder and you wanna make sure you keep your ribbons lined up nice and neat through this process. You don't want any of your ribbons to fold in on each other. So you wanna hold your ribbon a little bit at an angle. You wanna have your index finger underneath. Trying to get a zoomer in there. So you want to hold your index finger underneath where you have that ribbon, the base of that ribbon. And again, you wanna gather it nice and clean. And then we do our twist and making sure all the ribbons together, you just go up and, sorry, that's my cat. Um, just flip it over the finger and then again, come in a little bit on an angle and gather nice and neat. You're gonna gather it and then do your nice twist. I like to hold my thumb there just to give it a little more stability. You really want, this is another important part of the bow is that you really wanna make sure that you're doing the twist each time on top of each other. That way everything's lined up nice and even and it's gonna give you a nice uniform bow. Go ahead and it's pretty repetitive but make sure all your ribbons are lined up. So now comes in what I do early on in this process is use what they call a helping hand wire. You go to the right of that middle finger and you're gonna feed it underneath. And then gently wiggle it to go to, in front of, I should say, the base finger. And you wanna make sure that you have this evened out so that it's nice and even. And what this is gonna do is it's going to, see there's a good view there that you have it right in the center all the way at the bottom. And you're gonna go ahead and twist these wires. I'm sorry, I end up blocking your view during this, but you wanna twist it and just one time is good tuck the one wire up at the top away from you and then the other one at the bottom. This really is gonna help because you'll see at the end how thick the base of this ribbon where we're doing our twist, really how thick that it gets. It, it's a couple inches at least. So again, you wanna pinch your ribbon together, do a nice twist Again, I hold it. You don't have to hold it if you don't want. Um, this is only the third time making this bow. In my previous attempts, I used only two ribbons, and that was much easier, I should, I could say, to try to keep the ribbons lined up. I do like how the finished product of this one turned out using the three ribbons. I think it gives it a really nice look, um, but it, was definitely something to get used to. Again, you're just, you know, making sure. This isn't difficult, it's just making, you just wanna make sure everything is lined up. I don't wanna say perfectly because nothing in crafting is perfect, but you really want them lined up as best you can because it's just gonna give you a better finished product. And we're gonna twist. We all know how important that twist is. 
I apologize. I did a voiceover thinking that I would get away from all the sounds in my house, but that obviously is not the case. My cat Oliver wants you to know that he's here. But hey, that's real life, right? Okay, again, with the gathering, you're gonna see me stop and start a few times here and redo what I'm doing, but it's just important to take that couple extra seconds, you know, and make sure everything's lined up how you want. I do a lot of fixing of the previous, um, I don't know what you would call that, from when I did the ribbon on the previous finger. So just to try to make it as smooth and even as possible. So now I'm gonna get ready to show you how I add an extra, I don't wanna say finger, but how you can add an extra layer of bows. There are 13 fingers, and on this one I wanted to have 17 little bow areas. I don't even know what those are called, I apologize. So I'm gonna use the helping hand wire, and you wanna make sure you keep it as even as possible you want where you twist to be in the center of the ribbon. You don't want it to be at the top or at the bottom. Everything you want to keep in the center. It's just going to keep everything together nicely. And again, produces a better bow. So what you wanna do is you can just go ahead and lift that set of ribbon off and just set it right next to the one that you did before. Some people I've seen take it and just go over the same loops. I tried that before and it really didn't work for me, probably because I don't have a lot of experience, but I just feel that this is so easy to do that it doesn't really you know, cause a problem. And I think it makes the base of the ribbon lay a little bit nicer as well. And you see, how nice that it stays over there, that it doesn't even get in your way. I mean, that is one of the great things we all love about wired ribbon. It tends to stay where you want it, hopefully anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and twist. And I didn't use the helping hand wire here, but as you can see, I just gently took that off, set it next to it, if you loop your ribbons too tight, it may make this part a little bit difficult, but if you find that it is too tight and you're not able to easily remove your ribbon from that finger, you can always remove the finger, scoot over the loops, and then place the finger back in, and that'll work just as well. Now that I'm about halfway through with the bows, the ribbons, and placing them, I do tend to use the helping hand wire more. It just helps give you more control. It keeps everything nice and even. And as you can see, we're over an inch in thickness here at the base. And you may be thinking, that's a lot of material. How are we going to cover that up? But it does actually get hidden. You don't, you don't see that in the finished product. As you can see, this was definitely a glittery ribbon. Here I'm showing you just what to expect halfway through, how it all lined up evenly. I just really loved how this ribbon looked together. The little music notes I think are adorable. I think the polka dots go in any season. 
And then of course the gold and silver Christmas trees. I think it just is creating a nice and elegant bow. I'm sorry, I probably should have sped this up for you guys, but feel free if, you know, you want to speed on through this part. I don't blame you. I was pretty intimidated at first using the Probo, but watching a bunch of videos from different um, people here on YouTube, you know, it gives you a great place to start. You learn everybody's tips and tricks and what to do and what not to do. And then you just kind of figure out how to do it yourself and what works for you. Because as we all know, we all do things differently and what works for some doesn't necessarily work for another, but it's, I think it's great to have a community where everybody shares their knowledge and tips and tricks and we can all find something that works. Here you see that I don't like how I did my twist on the previous row. Again, don't be afraid to stop what you're doing and go back and fix your mistake or fix something you may not like. The good thing about this bow, I should say the great thing about this bow maker is that, especially with the helping hand wire, you know, you can literally walk away from this at any time and come back and restart it without losing your place, without worrying about losing the tension on your bows. It really is a game changer when it comes to making bows. I apologize that I'm so close there to the end of the camera angle. I'm definitely going to have to work on that for any future videos. As you see, I was having a little bit of difficulty keeping the three of those together. I do use the spool holder that comes along with the Probo. It's extremely helpful. But I just tonight could not get, I could not put it in the proper place for these ribbons to not become tangled a little bit. And again, I, I think that's just me learning how to work with three ribbons versus two. I'm definitely looking forward to making some more of these bows. They're fun. So again, I'm going to, and I'm sorry, you can't see it. I'm going to pull that previous loop of ribbon off the finger. Just set it to the side. Again, I'm fixing my twist. It does get a little tricky as it gets thicker to keep that twist nice and crisp. I know you're supposed to not take your hand off and use it. You're not supposed to use two hands, but I cheated. And I did. This is just a huge important part of making these bows is making sure that twist is nice and making sure here, I'm gonna show you again. I only did this two times on each side, but if you wanted to make your tree topper bow a little more full, you can always do this on multiple fingers. Especially if you're only using one ribbon or even two ribbons. That way you have a much fuller bow. Look 
got a little confused there on which was my helping hand wire and what was one of the original wires. So now we're putting the last loop of ribbon on. For this tutorial, I did not put the tails um, on this bow. I'm just going to attach them later after I fluff it. I just figured it'd be nice, it'd be easier for me to keep the tails out of the way when I'm showing the fluffing part. I usually add um, six feet of ribbon for each side of the tree, so 12 feet. And I'm also going to offer, you know, customers, you know, where they can purchase um, additional six foot links if they want to add more to their tree. But this tree topper would end up with six tails, three on each side. So that could be plenty. I also make matching bows tree bows to go, you know, with the tree topper, just as a nice little coordinating touch to that. So this is going to be our final twisting. So I do it about three or four times. You really don't want to do it too much more than that because you could break the wire and you really don't want to do that after all your hard work. I usually leave an inch or two, at least I did this time because I didn't add the tails. And now what you're going to want to do, well, here's what it looks like, I should say. You see how that's all on top of each other in the center of the base finger. So now I'm going to take the original wire off the bottom nail and you wanna make sure that you go counterclockwise when you're taking this off and you wanna go out wide. You don't wanna just pull it straight up because you're, you could tangle that wire. So now I take these two and I twist them as tight as I can. You know, you don't wanna twist, you don't wanna be He-Man here and break the wire, but I give it a couple good twists And then what I do is I grab the helping hand wire and the original wires and I twist those together. See, I'm showing there the two of each. Twist them two or three times. Again, you don't want to overdo it. And you want this wire to stay long because you want to be able to connect it on the fluff box. So here's where I am twisting the two pipe cleaners together just to make them longer. I'm sure if you had a 20 inch, that would be fine. But this is how I secure the tree topper bow to the tree. And I just think it's easier to put this on now so that you don't have to try to figure out where you're placing it later. And again, I go to the right of the middle finger and to the right of the base finger like I did with the helping hand wire. And you wanna make sure you have the proper placement and that they're secured together. <laughs> I obviously missed that a little bit. So then you wanna make sure that your pipe cleaners are nice and ev even before you twist them. And then you wanna give you know, a nice firm twist. Again, not too much. You don't want to break anything. So I always remove the base finger before I remove the bow from the actual bow maker. And this always reminds me of a peacock.
There we go, there's the peacock. Looks a little weird, but whatever, it works. So now what you're gonna wanna do is grab your fluff box. If you don't have one, you can actually remove all the fingers on your um, Pro Ball. Leave the base finger and the middle finger and you can use that as well. The fluff box really is just a large box, heavy box, but it really does make all the difference. When I'm attaching the ribbon to the fluff box, I do not secure it with the pipe cleaner. I just use the wires. That was the base wire as well as the helping hand wire. And I really try to secure it as tight as I can. You're gonna have some movement when you're fluffing, but you try, you know, you wanna minima, minimize it. Minimize it? Yeah, that, there we go. So here we have our mohawk of ribbon. And you just wanna start separating all of them. Don't be afraid. I mean, you don't want to tug like crazy, but don't be afraid to pull them out. You're going to feel them loosen. You're going to want to turn them a little bit each way, and that way it really loosens it from the base. And everybody has their way of fluffing on which ribbons to pull out first. And I honestly thought having three ribbons it would be easier to keep them separated and not have so many close together of the same ribbon, but that really didn't happen. So I spent a lot of time going back and trying to figure that out. But these guys really stuck together, so it took me a little bit to try to separate them. And I'm sure you can see all that lovely glitter Feel like it's definitely Christmas time and it's only July. The polka dotted ribbon and the music sheet ribbon were thinner than I would have normally wanted to use for a bow like this, but it just means you have to take a little extra time and don't be afraid to get at the base of where your bow is and you know run your fingers along and straighten them. And you'll feel the tension as you're separating the ribbons. And don't be afraid to tug a little bit and see how I twist. That really loosens it gently. And you can feel them release and it makes them easier to move around. I feel like I try to make everything look perfect as I go, knowing I'm just going to go back and re-fluff several more times. I'm sure everyone can relate to that. See that ribbon's just a little bit thinner and it's, once you have it shaped, it looks pretty, but it's a little bit of work getting it there. And again, don't be afraid to you know, reach down close to the center and separate those ribbons. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and speed this up a little bit so I didn't torture everybody. I only sped it up a little bit so that you can still see how I do this. I know everybody has their own way of fluffing and we all do it the same but a little bit different at the same time. It was funny, I've had my Etsy shop for just under a year now and last year around Christmas time when I was making Christmas wreaths, I actually was almost in tears because I just could not make bows very well. I would watch video after video and practice and 
it just seemed like I would never get it right. And I almost just stopped making wreaths over it. But I'm glad I stuck with it. I'm not a quitter. You know, it's just, to me, I think bows are the hardest things because I think we all want them to look perfect. And even though there's no perfect in crafting, but if you see here, when I get towards the top, you know, that's when I really start twisting the bows to go, you know, the loops to go in different angles and different directions. I do that a little bit with the loops at the base, but I think it really makes a difference in the center to see them going in different directions and have them nice and stand up nice and tall. When I start the other side, I really try to do, you know, the opposite ribbons than what I did previously. You know, and you can always mix up the ribbons. You can, you know, put the base one. doesn't have to be on the base. It can be up a level. You know, just play with it. Nothing's perfect as long as it lays the way you want it to lay. That's the end goal. So leave me a comment if anyone else can relate to being in tears over trying to get your bow to do what you want it to do. And I always thought that I had to have the most expensive ribbon and here I'm using Sam's Club ribbon in this video and you can see that it looks beautiful and you would never know that you pay what seven dollars for 50 yards of this. I just think this this ribbon really makes it affordable, especially if you're gonna be selling this. And with today's shipping costs, you know, we need to save where we can while still giving our customers, you know, a great product that they're gonna to love to show everybody. I actually think I'll be making one of these for my tree this year. I'm definitely a Christmas nut. I have trees in every room. So I think I will be making a few of these this year. Anybody else guilty of creating for everybody else but yourself? I am definitely one of those people. I tend to forget that I need to decorate my own home. But see, don't be afraid to twist the ribbon. I think twisting it really loosens it from that wire that's holding it and really allows it to stand up nice and tall. And now here comes the part that I'm sure we're all familiar with and that's fluffing and moving things around and changing it. And of course, when you fluff one area, you've smushed another, so you need to go back and redo that. I really do hope everybody enjoyed this video. I hope this is, I know it's not in the entire frame the whole time, and I do apologize but I am going to start posting some videos to my YouTube channel. This is something new for me and I'm excited to bring new things. Um, if anybody's interested in seeing anything and if I can show you, please leave a message in the comments and I will work on creating a video for that. I would love to show more and do more if anybody's interested in watching it but if you did like this video it would be great if you would like it or subscribe as I said this is my first YouTube video so it'd be great to get some subscribers and some followers that would really help me 
and I would appreciate that. Let me know also what you think of these color combination and if you guys have any really good tips on how to separate those ribbons from having so many right next to each other because I feel like I have a lot of polka dots next to each other. I mean, we all love polka dots, but trying to break them up here, I was really struggling. If anybody makes this bow, I would really love to see your pictures as well. I'd love to see your finished product. If you have some tips on what you did differently that you think worked a little bit better than the video, please share. I think this is how we all learn, is from each other. And just practicing and practicing and finding new ways and new tips and tricks on how to do things. Here I am, constantly fluffing. I think I'm about to give up. Yes, so there is the finished product, as you can see. There's a lot of height to this. It's gonna look beautiful on a beautiful tree. I think this would work on a seven foot, seven and a half, nine foot. Really, I think, I think it might be a little bit too big for a five foot. Well, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.